Hey everybody, Mac and I are excited to see you back. This is our second um, live video that we wanted to do. So look, We're learning, we? we are a hundred percent more live videos than we did yesterday. Yeah, we got our own little logo up there today, Rhea. You make it happen. Well, you put me to work. And we got high quality HD. You, you like that? We can yeah. you can see our wrinkles That's a little right. better. Yeah, yeah. I got the most. Well, you're older. Hey, I know it. <laughs> 11 years older, so she ain't joking. Hey, everyone. Uh, today's topic is your boss can't hold you back, but you can. So we want to kind of dig into some of the ways that sometimes when we're working for a leader, we feel like isn't a, a leader that we want to be following necessarily or a leader who's not interested in growth and development. Um, but we don't always think about how what are the things that we can be doing in that season that can help us move forward and, and come to a better season? So we want to drill down into some of those kind of building off of yesterday's topic. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people think their boss is holding them back, but what I want to tell you is your boss can't hold you back, but you can. And we're going to talk about some of those things today. And, you know, one of them, your boss can't stop you from creating options, but you can. And we, Rhea and I know we talk about it all the time. You know, leadership is influence and increasing your influence increases your options. So everything that you can do to grow and develop your influence is going to increase your options. And life's always better with more options in the real. 100 percent. More options, more opportunities. Go ahead. So let's just dive right. In. Are you going to let me talk first? You guys know if I don't talk first, I'm not going to get to talk. So I get to talk first. <laughs> so number one, first and foremost, your boss doesn't have the power to stop you from leveraging your time away from work. You know, a lot of times we think about getting ahead is something that we do while we're at work. But in truth, most of our getting ahead in life comes from when we're not at work. When you're working, you're busy. I mean, you got to be working when you're at work, right? And so the opportunity for us to move ahead is when we're not at work. And your boss has zero control or power over that time. Yeah, that's another thing we talk about because a lot of people, and I just want to interrupt myself, Rhea, is the comment, are the comments, will they show up if they just start com coming uh -huh. automatically? We will, we will see those. Okay. Yep. We don't, we don't know if anybody's listening or not out there until somebody makes a comment, I guess, but hopefully everything's working. Again, <laughs> we're still learning, so we don't care that much if a whole lot of people are watching because we're uh, still trying to figure it out ourselves, but we, we upgraded the, the option and uh, so now now we got a better stream for you guys hopefully and it'll get better as we get used to it but it's something we're going to do when we have time to do it but Rio's talking about you know the boss can't stop you from leveraging leveraging your time at work and you know this labor day holiday weekend's coming up and you know when you think about a labor day the, the blue collar workforce and, and if you don't know me personally and you don't know my story the first 10 years of my career from 1988 to 2008 i was working on the front lines and so I was a frontline factory worker operating CNC lays, mills, drills, and, and, and those type things. So, oh, I see Aaron's there. So mm -hmm. he's, he said, we're doing great. So I'll, <laughs> hi, Aaron. Glad to see you. So I'm going to share something about Aaron here in a minute. He called me the other day. So I'm looking forward to, to kind of sharing about him. But, but when, when I think about the blue collar workforce, I mean, that's, that's why we, we write the, that's why I write the books, the blue collar leadership books and the blue collar leadership brand. Because throughout my 20 year career in manufacturing, no leader ever invested one penny or one minute actually introducing me formally to this type of content. So I think it's really important to, to get this message out to the folks. And even even that, that, that little pointer oh, it's gone away. Rio had a pointer right here on my forehead. So I'm looking <laughs> at the screen I'm like we got to move that thing. And, but it went away by the time I got you thought it by. was a fly. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so. What I want, what I want the blue collar folks to know, I mean, I know many of you out there are, have been overlooked, underappreciated, often underdeveloped, and that's where my passion comes from. What are you grinning about? I'm laughing about the pointer. <laughs> Sorry, it was just distracting that you got distracted by something that. Oh, we're gonna have to tell them the story about the zipper, but I got to teach okay. this lesson right here first. Uh, okay. You remember that story about the zipper? I do, but I wasn't gonna share it. But yeah, okay. It's all right. That's what part of being live is. People get to see us authentic, really authentic, which is what I like about this. I actually enjoyed doing yesterday's session. But when we talk about leveraging our time away from work, the boss can't stop us from doing that. But but we can. You can. If you want a better job, you want a better life. This holiday weekend is coming up and nothing wrong with hanging out 
celebrating, partying, whatever it is you do. But what you got to know is if you choose to do that, you're probably going to guarantee you get to do what you're doing now longer. And, and that's great if you enjoy what you're doing. But if but if you're not happy with what you're doing, if you're not happy where you're doing it at, or you're not happy with who you're doing it with, you got to develop the discipline within you to leverage your time away from work. Because a lot of people think, you know, I, I've learned and experienced a lot of people who want to get ahead. They want to focus on getting ahead basically from nine to five. And I know all of you don't work from nine to five. What I'm talking about, though, is at work, people who want to get ahead at work. I mean, in life, they try to focus on getting ahead at work. But those who truly want to get ahead and are capable of getting ahead, they know a little secret. They focus on getting better from from five to nine. What I mean by that is when they're not at work. Because sure. it's easy to go in and want to do a good job, think you get ahead. And, and the people who are hungry do that. But the truly hungry people, they go invest in, in themselves outside of work. And th those who are not doing that, they're going to be left behind by those who are. Yeah. So another thing that uh, your boss can't stop you from um, doing is, is charting your own course, right? Investing in yourself, developing yourself. Again, sometimes that's when you're not at work. Developing your competency. That might look like getting a, a certification or a degree or something practical on the competency side that's going to help you move forward, right? Learning a new skill. Anything that makes us more valuable is going to help us add more value to other people. And that increases our influence, increases our options. Yep. Another thing a leader can't do is they can't stop you from developing your character. Most organizations don't even focus on character development. And a lot of folks who read my books or watch, listen to my podcast or read Ria's books and listen to her podcast, quite often they reach out to us. And a lot of times we hear those folks, you know, they kind of get frustrated and irritated that their company's not doing any, any development. And so instead of getting frustrated with them, what they need to do is look in the mirror and, and ask themselves, am I developing myself? Don't get mad at the boss for, for what you're not doing yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you focus on developing your own self, your character again, because most companies don't do that. And we always talk about, Rhea and I talk about our character is either going to maximize or minimize our competency. So that's that's a that's a key component that, that you can focus on because the boss can't stop you. The boss can't stop you from having a good life, but you can. The boss can't stop you from having a better life at home, but you can. The boss can't stop you from having a better life at work, but you can. And, and if you got a bad boss, you really, really need to understand this. And also, I, I would say, uh, I've got a podcast episode 316 where I actually talk about this for, for about 30 minutes. And so if, if you like the few nuggets we're sharing with you today, that's all this is meant to be is just, uh, just a, a short sharing of a few nuggets just to raise your awareness, uh, provoke some thought. Mm -hmm. Go check out podcast episode 316. Uh, Blue Collar Leadership is the name of the podcast. So just a comment from Carlos Cody says agreed. Um, I think that says you're talking about the boss. Boss can't hold you back, but but you can. So you had a story. You started off by saying you had a story you wanted to share about uh, Aaron. Yeah. And, and we got to got to share the story about the zipper since I mentioned that. Well, you ago. better get talking. We're <laughs> going we're, we're we're to try not to go over 15 minutes, baby, but it might be a little longer. They don't have to listen if they don't want to. Right. Riff? OK. So so uh, this book right here, Blue Collar Leadership and Supervision, Unleash Your Team's Potential. It's one of my Blue Collar Leadership uh, series books. You see, it's kind of thin, 30 chapters, three pages each. But a, a gentleman, he, did, he shared a post a while ago, uh, a comment a moment ago, and and he was, I had I texted him before I got on here live and asked him if I could share his name because he called me, I don't know, five, six months ago, and he's actually a towboat captain. He, I think he lives in Austin, but he operates uh, up and down the Mississippi River, if I, if I remember right, and he's a captain of, of a, a towboat crew. Uh, you know, a lot of us call them tugboats if we don't know, but I'm pretty sure in the business they call them towboats, but you'll see them moving those big barges. They all have I don't know, six, six, nine, twelve. I don't know how many barges they'll have. Those big, you have them all tied together and, and moving them up and down the, uh, the, the river and intercoastal waterways. But he called me about six months ago. I want to talk about leadership and that sort of stuff. And I told him some books to read and he actually did what we're talking about right here. He, he leveraged his own time, started developing himself, but he called, he called, uh, Rhea and I the other day, we were, we were on the road and he called and, uh, talked to us for a little bit. And he was talking about the results he's getting from reading these books and not just this book, I don't think, but I know he's read this one. This is one he was talking about primarily. And what he was saying was 
how the, he was getting insane results. Uh, he said insane many times while he was uh, telling me about this, but it's powerful. But he said he had never seen a crew work together and operate the way his crew's operating today. And he's been doing this 20 years, he, even his own crews in the past. And so he's, he's gung ho about this and, and nothing, nothing negatory against his organization. They may do all types of development. I don't know. What I know is Aaron is doing his own personal development. And, and we invite you to do that for yourself. You can go to uh, bluecollarleadership.com forward slash download. And uh, you can actually, if you go there, you can read the first five chapters of this book. If you're a frontline entry level uh, person, check out this one while you're there. Blue Collar Leadership Leading from the Front Lines. And uh, this one is how do, how do you become a high impact individual? The kind of person a, an organization wants to promote, the kind of an organization uh, a kind of person other organizations want to steal away. I mean, how good would your life be if you had 10 people, 10 different companies trying to hire you on? You may not want to leave, but it's nice to have options. Always. Your boss can't take options away from you, but you can. Mm -hmm. So go so go check those out. So um, before you get into your story, um, we got a, just a, a LinkedIn question, a comment and question here from LinkedIn. It says, um, number one, thanks for this. But one thing that has kept me at many jobs is being loyal. How, and the question, how do we leverage this and keep it in perspective? Yeah, so there's nothing wrong with loyalty. I mean, that's, that builds a lot of trust with, with leaders, right? Absolutely. So the, the one way to leverage it is if if you're doing above and beyond, like, you know, another thing I say, you, your boss doesn't have the, the power to stop you from, from doing more than is required. The boss doesn't have the power to stop you from doing things better than required. The the, the boss doesn't have the... Have, have the uh, power to stop you from doing things sooner than required. Mm -hmm. So, so those are some, some key character traits. And, and I've actually got a chapter on each one of those in, in this book, blue collar leadership leading from the front lines, because it's how do you lead yourself? Well, and this book also, regardless of whether you're a frontline entry level person or someone who's has a formal uh, authority position, this book right here teaches you how to lead yourself well, in spite of the boss that you work for good or bad boss doesn't matter or indifferent or neutral boss. So how you how you leverage this when you start learning this in an organization that doesn't teach it formally, I mean that that's a, that's a huge maximizer for you because you're gonna start to stand out. And and I have people who, you know, reach out to me who study my content and they work in organizations where, where they're not teaching this type of content. So it doesn't take them long before they start standing out because they have a greater awareness about human interaction and the the uh, psychology of influence and that sort of thing. So that that's that's how you actually leverage this type of content if you want to stay where you're at nothing wrong with staying where you're at but some people are complaining because of where they're at but they won't leave they don't have the courage to leave mm -hmm. so the boss doesn't have the power to stop you from leaving but you do yeah i'm just adding on to that kind of that that perspective like you say is is really critical right the balance um and i kind of tagging on to what you're saying one of the things i like to to think about is when you when you can't be a hundred percent on the team Right. And then then to me, that's a sign that says, OK, it's it's time to start looking for the next opportunity. Yep. I see Carlos Cody posting out there. He's a he's a student of a lot of my content. I've been mentoring Code Carlos for a while and he, he he's living this stuff. Go check him out on LinkedIn. He's putting out videos. He's right. He's got newsletters. Rhea and I both have newsletters. If you're hungry, there's plenty of free stuff. You know, I talk about my books. You don't have to buy my books, though. We've got podcasts that are free. You go to that download link, you can read hundreds of pages for free from all these different books. You don't have to buy the book. We ain't trying to sell you the book, but we're trying to make you aware that it's out there. Mm -hmm. Books change my life. And and so Carlos is uh, someone who's who's getting tremendous results and he's been growing and going by applying this in his own career. Yeah. And, some, and, and a lot of times I don't know how much his organizations, he's worked at several different organizations since I've been mentoring him. I don't know what they've been doing for him, but I know what he's been doing for him. He's been making it happen. And that's what we own here today is we're inviting you, whoever you may be, wherever you may be, the, the boss can't hold you back, but you can. And I want to help you unleash your potential. So tell them that quick story about. Oh, I about, have to tell them the zipper story. About, about the zipper story. And then we'll, uh, we'll leave them alone so they can go have their weekend. I, oh, well. So one of the things that is wonderful about Mac is that he's very authentic. But sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. I don't know. Sometimes he's more authentic than maybe I would be in certain situations. So a couple of years back, we were speaking at a um, 
kind of like a hotel conference room. So it wasn't like we were on a big stage. It was kind of like a, a floor or maybe a small stage and then and round tables in front of us. And the, the thermostat had either gotten too hot or too cold. So at some point, Mac was kind of speaking and teaching. It was like a four hour workshop. So at some point, I step away and let him keep teaching. And then I slip around to the back to adjust the thermostat up or down. And I don't remember which. And when I walked back there, someone jumped up and they grabbed me and they said, hey, I just I, I, can you just tell him his zipper is undone? And so I thought, well, immediately I want to be like discreet about this. Right. Because I don't know. That just seems to me like something that you'd want to take care of. Um discreetly, right? So anyway, so I, I walked back up to the front of the stage and on my notes, I wrote down a short note to Mac. Hey, check your zipper. And it takes a couple of minutes before I get an opportunity to kind of slide over there and share the note with him discreetly. Like I'm going to be wife of the year for helping him solve this problem without being embarrassed or anything like that. And so I turned to Mac and I share him with him the note. And he says, I looked at the note, you know, it said my zipper was down and I just told everybody I had to pause for a moment. Rhea had to share some valuable information with me and, and uh, she told me my zipper was down. So I need to pause for a moment, reach down <laughs> and zip it up and, and carry on about my business. But I, but I turned it into a lesson and talked about being transparent and being vulnerable and, and just being a real person. Because what I knew was she handed me that note. Other people already knew about it. So if, if I tried to, to, kind of hide it or excuse myself. Any, anybody who knew that they was already going to be laughing. They're going to be talking about me at break. So I took that sword out of their hand so they couldn't uh, stab me with it later, so to speak. But uh, who, who cares? Everybody knew. Zip it up. But but I do wear a black underwear now. So. <laughs> See, that, that might be TMI. That might be TMI. Well, it makes it not so obvious. But but I'll tell you what happened that day is, is I know I was wearing uh, dress pants at that event. And so, uh, you know, these dress pants, they Normally blue jeans, you got a button and a zipper. You got two things to do. But but these these dress pants, you got a button on the inside, you got a little clip on the inside, and then there's another button, and then there's a zipper. So you got four things to do. So I forgot one of them, Riff. Well, you forgot the important one. Hey, I gotta say something while we're talking about this. And you know, people don't have to keep watching if it's too long, but you know, some I think it was uh the talk we had the other day. I can't remember if it was a talk or a post, but I saw it on LinkedIn. I just want to share it with people because it just subconsciously dropped in my mind. But Someone made a comment on one of my posts and I don't really know if it's true or not. I didn't take time to do the research, but they were saying they, they were living in a country where the unemployment was 50 percent. And they were saying some of the things that I talked about, you know, didn't necessarily necessarily apply. You know, it sounds great when I talk about it, about being proactive and being responsible and, and getting a job. But, but they, they were saying they had 50 percent unemployment, so it, it doesn't really apply in their case. Mm -hmm. But I can promise you, if you're the kind of person that I talk about and I write about, if you're working somewhere where there's 50 percent unemployment nationally, you're going to have a job. 50 percent of the people may not have a job, but you're going to have a job and anybody like you is going to have a job. But I shared a story with a, with this person. And I, I think uh, I can't remember 100 percent if it was John, John Maxwell. I may have heard the story from him, but I, I don't think it was his dad. I really don't remember where I heard it. So I don't want to really tie somebody to it. But I heard a story from someone talking about their dad during the the great depression, you know, when jobs were pretty hard to find around here in the U S and, uh, they talked about their father went around and he would go to different businesses and he would go and offer to do whatever they needed doing for free. He'd say, I work here a day or I work here two days for free. I don't expect any pay. I don't want any pay. I just want to help you out. I got time. I ain't got a job. I need a job, but I ain't asking you for one. I, I just want to help you out. And, in his heart, he was helping people out. But at the same time, he knew he was going to be uh, building trust because he had a good work, work ethic and all that sort of stuff. And he said often at the end of the day, people wanted to actually pay him something. But if he made that deal with them, he would not accept the pay. Mm -hmm. He said, if you want to pay me to come back another day that I hadn't told you I would work and Ooh, do some I work like for that. you, I like I'll that. come back and work for you. But I told you today is on me. Because if he takes the money at the end of the day, then it was manipulative, right? Yep. But he... He found he had two or three jobs while other people didn't have any jobs. While the people playing the victim about this economy and all this kind of stuff. And it may be that, but you ain't got to worry about finding, you know, 200 million people job. You only got to find one person a job. Mm. If you do the stuff we talk about, you're going to find that job and you're going to get promoted. And you're going to get pay raises. You know, when I'm talking about that, there's another thing the boss can't stop you from doing. 
They can't stop you from starting your own business. But you can stop yourself from it. Yeah. And it takes a lot of courage to start your own business. I meet people all over this country, especially in the skilled trades area and the blue collar jobs. And, and, I, and I see them struggling. And I know if they would just step out and go start their own business. I knew I knew one guy. He was he was a tool room guy in a, in a, in a plant. And he he operated manual CNC lays drill. He could make anything on this planet out of metal. And I used to think to myself, this was, you know, 30 years ago. Even back then, I could see it this guy's potential. He, he could go make hundreds of thousands or, or millions of dollars and do his own thing and love it and not have a boss, but he never did it. Mm. You know, he retired working inside of a company. And a lot of people say, well, well, I need my insurance and I need my benefits. Well, if you go make hundreds of thousands and, and millions of dollars, you can pay for your own insurance and cover yourself with benefits. But a lot of people can't see beyond the, the current reality. So that's just one thing I want to plant that seed with you. The, the boss can't stop you from having a better life. But you can. Should we wrap it up there? I, I guess. Good I, note you told my, my zipper story there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just some thoughts to take away for this weekend, right? <laughs> Being intentional with development, character and competency. Be intentional with moving forward in the direction that helps us grow, right? Because that's really what it comes down to. If you, if, the, if you feel like the boss is holding you back, then it's time to start thinking about what you can control rather than worrying about what you can't do. Well, if you feel like the boss is holding you back, that's your first problem right there. You're trying mm -hmm. to blame somebody else. There ain't nobody else holding you back. What, whatever you think the boss is doing, the boss ain't doing it. Because the only reason the boss can do anything to you is you're allowing them to do it in the first place. I got to tell another story real. All right. Last story. And then I I, I tell people I'm married at you for your name. I know. Because you we, got a lot of stories. We keep doing these things. I might just, I'm going to have to kick you out because you always You're going to move in my office. Yeah. You, she always <laughs> wants to stop. We got to stop. I just want to keep going. You told them 15 minutes and so wrap it up. Well, that was 15. We're going to do 15 more. That's a bonus. That's <laughs> over delivered. Look, the boss can't stop you from over delivering, but you can. And I ain't, I'm going to keep over delivering today. Hurry up. So somebody asked me one time that they, they was actually a, a young person working a frontline entry level blue collar job. And, and, and I was talking leadership stuff to them and they got to know me and they heard me talking about all this. And, and they said, you need to come to my dad's company. I said, why is that? They said, no, cause they treat, they treat the people like crap. They treat my dad like crap. He said, you need to come help them out. I said, I said, you want to know? I said, why do they treat your dad like crap? He said, he said, I really don't know. He said, uh, I said, do you want to know? He said, yeah. I said, this is why I said, you might not like it, but I want to tell you some truth. And leadership truth is kind of like a surgeon's scalpel. It might hurt, it might sting, but it's meant to help. I said, the reason that they treat your dad like crap is because your dad walks in there every day and allows it to happen mm -hmm. because he don't have options in life or he don't want to exercise those options. And he don't have to leave, but if he don't like them treating him like crap, he probably don't like being there. Mm -hmm. He probably don't have options. He may waste his time, you know, from nine to five when he's off of work, or excuse me, from five to nine when he's off of work. And on the weekends, his dad may have just hung out, party like I used to do. I'm better now. I don't waste my time like that, but I did it for a lot of years. And all those years, I, I was barely growing and barely moving up the ladder. But when I got focused, and I stopped doing a bunch of the dumb things I was doing and stopped wasting my time, started investing my time. My life started to get better at home and, and also professionally. So th that no, nobody at work can treat somebody who don't work their bad. And the only reason I told that young man, I said, the only reason that bad leader, that low impact leader is able to have a job is because people like your dad walk in there every day and go to work. I said, if your dad would develop himself and quit, the next person he treated like that would quit. The, these bad leaders wouldn't have anybody to leave. That company would either go out of business or they'd grow and develop that leader or they'd replace that leader, but there wouldn't be an opportunity for bad leaders to be in a position. Somebody else says, why are they so many bad leaders? One reason is because we won't step up and become the leader we wish we had. We don't want the responsibility, but we wish someone else would take that responsibility. All right, Rhea, I'm going to go because I got a call. I got a call scheduled for 3.30, so I got to get on there and get it. What's Carlos saying right there before we go? Um, he's just last comment, I, I think. Um, Carlos says, one book is a small investment for one to change their life. If you just read one of Max's books and apply the principles, your life will improve not only at work, but your marriage, relationships, and everything around you. The principles absolutely work. And thank you, Carlos. Carlos is a general manager of a, a warehouse shipping type facility. He used to work at Amazon. He's a, 
different places now, but he's been at several places, got a lot of experience. He's one of these high impact leaders I talk about. I've been mentoring him for four or five years. Reach out to him on LinkedIn. Get to know him. I'm sure he'll talk to you. He'll help you. But uh, Carlos is one of those folks getting results. People like Carlos, people like Aaron, a lot of other people who follow us, me and you, because we've lived it. Can't, can't nobody out there tell us this is a bunch of hocus pocus, fairy dust. It doesn't work. We know it works. Yeah, 100%. That's why we get excited about it. So you guys have a safe and enjoyable holiday weekend. And uh, talk to you next time.